Welcome back to State of Decay 2 and the Salt of the Earth. Uh, I was just playing with Milo, with one of my characters, and I've received some multiplayer rewards. I'm so excited. Uh, if you want to watch me and Milo playing State of Decay 2, by the way, you can go over to his channel, uh, which is called Bache. Uh, he's very proud of it. But yeah, so I am currently playing as a very injured character who uh, was trying to defend his son from all kinds of shenanigans. Let's switch to Jaden the Millennial. And what I want to do today is just go and hang out uh, doing bounties. I've been doing a lot of lethal builder lately, and it's been stressing me out. And I deserve a little break. So we're going to go over to the Bounty Broker. It's a new month, and uh, there's new bounties out there uh, that I haven't done in a long time. So let's go out and get into it. Uh, actually, wait, did I just... I just drank an energy drink for absolutely no reason. You know why? Because I've forgotten how to play this game. Uh, I think I was playing another game. Okay, I just tried... Okay, I just tried two different buttons to make my character run. One was RB, which caused me to drink an energy drink. And the other one was left click, which caused me to crouch. Because I was playing, I think it might have been Who's Your Daddy with my son, which has RB, ah, which has RB to run. And then I was playing a bunch of Helldivers last night, and that is left click to run. So I need to chill and maybe not play so many different games, but whatever. Okay, so I mostly just want to make sure that this guy is well enough equipped. I don't know what kind of bounties are out there, so I'm not going to try to prepare for them. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that he was not going to regret leaving home with the equipment that he had. So, uh, Orithaus is suggesting that I should probably do the thing I usually do, which is funnel free rewards to my lethal builder community. And uh, that's not a crazy idea. I'm not actually sure if they're in a good position to go and collect the rewards. Whoa, okay. Yeah. But maybe I should try to make that happen. Maybe I should actually go position somebody for my lethal builder community over there. So that I can start funneling stuff to them because... I don't know, I, I've been getting into trouble with that community. Like, I've been... Uh, I got somebody killed a couple of weeks ago, or... Was it a couple? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Which I'd gone a while, I think, without actually getting somebody killed. And so, you know, I think I just, I wasn't used to, uh, to worrying as much as you need to worry in the lethal zone. Because I've been lucky for a while. But eventually your luck runs out. Airy Twitch says, uh, uh, I haven't played in a week and I just wrecked two vehicles in the past hour. <laughs> yeah, I know, you, you, your, your skills in this game can get can get rusty real quick because it's not really about like basic physical skill it's about paying attention and you know like risk management and that's a that's like a, a sensitive vibes based skill that is just really easy to lose track of you know if you've been playing a different game with different risk assessment going on you can just lose track of what's scary and what's not in state of decay and end up making choices that are uh, deeply questionable. Yeah, so Jaden here has very, very little stamina. And so I usually keep him, I try to keep him traveling light so that he can still like you know, run around and get as much done as he can. He can't really deal with extra encumbrance. Okay, so this is just I guess, actually, my other community could probably also appreciate some influence. Let's look at... Okay, so this is a pawn shop pack. This is one of our kind of grab bag packs where we almost just, like, made up a name for it because it just had a bunch of random crap in it. Uh, but let's see if there's any other stuff that would be really easy to get. Like, for instance, make 10 cups of coffee. I can just do that. Let, right? Because I've got a kitchen, right? Do I have a kitchen? Do I have a kitchen? Yes, yeah, so it's right here. Okay kitchen let's make 10 cups of coffee so i gotta do this five times which is okay i've got 80 food so it's just gonna be annoying but it's not gonna be expensive 
I might have done an extra. I think I did an extra. I wasn't really counting that well. Okay, so now I've got two of these done. Um, are there any others that I can just... Oh, craft 15 Molotovs. That's another one. That's another good crafty one. Okay, let's get rid of Allied Enclaves. And craft some Molotovs, too. Let's do that. Let's go over here to our workshop. And nine Molotovs in one go. Another nine. And again, we're good. Okay, so now we have got three bounties all queued up. And so now I guess it's time for me to go and switch to my other community. So historically, I think what I've done is I've done an... Should I... I'm, I'm wondering, should I try to do two episodes simultaneously as I go back and forth between these two communities? That sounds like an annoying editing job for me um, that I might actually enjoy. I really like annoying editing jobs. Before I do that, though, let's... Um, I'm going to go stand on top of the car and catch up with my chat. Orathos is asking, can I come and join his game and drop a Mad Norma in it uh, because the game ate his and the bounty's gone? I get, I'm very sorry about that the, the whole car situation with the Orathos where you lost your cars upon moving maps. That should not have happened, and I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Orthos said, I had my first death in three years the other day. Wow, that's pretty impressive to go that long without a death in this game. Zedric says, I haven't played since they added the Cleo missions with clothing pieces. Too many games to play. I That too many games to play problem is one of the biggest problems in my life. I've got so many games that I want to play. And I okay, one of the biggest problems in my life, that's exaggerating. There are bigger problems. But the um, but yeah, it's like I think about it all the time, though. It's like I want to be playing Pacific Drive. I want to be playing Helldivers. Those are the two games that are like front of mind for me. But also, I still haven't finished Alan Wake 2. I still have like there's so many things that I want experiences I want to have, th games that I want to fully understand that I just haven't had had time to, to do. So and the problem is like, I mean, I feel like I just what I need to do is take a day off and play a bunch of games except that there's just a lot to do right now and i can't tell you anything about what i'm doing but there's a lot to do and uh it's like you know i've just got you know a whole bunch of just a whole bunch of things man i wish i could say more but i can't uh anyway okay so here's what we're gonna do i am actually gonna start a second episode simultaneous with this one and here's why it's because whatever happens when i switch over to my lethal builder community I've learned some respect for the lethal zone. I could get a character killed or something. I don't want to do that in the, you know, in the playlist for a different community. I want to do it on the lethal builder community. So I'm going to snap my fingers and we're going to switch. Uh, I'm going to switch episodes and come back to this one, having claimed these bounties. All right, we're back. Uh, over in the other community, I actually used those influence rewards uh, to recruit a, a character for my legacy pool. So it's actually going to make a really positive difference for that community, even though it was just boring old influence rewards. So now let's look at the bounties we've got here and which ones we actually want to take on. So there's kill a juggernaut with rifles. Now, is there a juggernaut currently on the map that would be easy to target? We've got a horde. Um, we've got a plague heart here. We should keep that in mind. I don't see a juggernaut, so that might be one that we delay. A bloater while crouched. Just one bloater while crouched? Oh, easy. Feral with heavy weapons. Let's wait on that one. Uh, armored Zeds with vehicles. I could drive around and find those. Plague Heart with heavy weapons. Okay, we've got a Feral with heavy weapons and a Plague Heart with heavy weapons. And zombies with... Okay. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We've got a whole heavy weapons section ready to go. So let's do other stuff. Of course, actually, I was about to say, let's just do the bloater while crouched, juggernauts with rifles, and armored zeds with vehicles. Except I can't guarantee that I'll find any of these guys because none of them are on the map right now. So maybe I should switch to a character who's going to be better with heavy weapons and just go out and do all this heavy weapons nonsense. I think, I think that might actually be the better move. And then we'll see if anything new has spawned in the meantime. Any new obvious targets for things like the Juggernauts with Rifles one. So 
So Sinister Plank points out that ferals with heavy weapons is deceptively difficult because it's super easy to knock a feral around with a heavy weapon, but then when you go in to execute them when they're like when they're dazed, the execution on a feral is is a close combat weapon execution. Uh, and it's always a close combat wep weapon execution. You don't do the big overhead swing with the heavy weapon. And so you're right. That's uh, that's a problem. So, okay, so this is where I'm going to be going. And I've got a paucity of outposts. I've got, like, no outposts. What am I doing? Do I have... Okay, I've got base-wide power and stuff. I don't need power. I'm just thinking I should switch characters at an outpost. So let's go claim the veterinary clinic. so that we can switch characters out here. So I don't have to go all the way home to switch characters. Which is, that's what I'm thinking. But yeah, Sinister Plank points out, and, and this was, we debated about whether to do this. Like, because we've got all of these bounties that say, you know, kill zombies with heavy weapons, kill zombies with blades, kill zombies with close combat weapons. We've got all of these different qualifications, and we had to decide, are we going to count it if you've equipped a blade, or are we going to count it if the kill is actually done with the blade, um, or with the heavy weapon? So, like, for instance, you know, if, if you've got a character who's carrying a heavy weapon, they also have a close combat weapon, and if they perform an execution on a zombie, they'll use the close combat weapon. Visibly on the screen, you'll see them using the close combat weapon. And so we had to decide, do we want to give you credit for a close combat kill, but not a heavy weapon kill, if you use if you use the execution? Or do we want to say that if you've got a heavy weapon equipped, all of your melee kills count as heavy weapon kills? And we ended up going with the former. We ended up deciding that we would, whatever you see happening on screen, that's what you get credit for happening because we thought that that would feel more intuitive to players. And most of the time, I think it's right. I think the case where it's not that great is the case that Sinister Plank brought up, which is there are certain enemies like Ferals where the only way to execute them is with a close combat weapon. And so if you're trying to kill them in kind of the best, most effective way, sometimes uh, you'll do what comes naturally and you won't get credit for the bounty that you were going for. Actually, let's claim this before we search it, because the searching will go faster. So I'm going to poke around in here. That did not clear it, but now we can see where the zombie is. It's in the minimap. Hello, sir. Yeah. Madam. Excuse me, madam. No! Look, I'm trying to murder a zombie. Whatever. All right. So now... We'll claim the outpost. And, I don't know, not supply locker. We'll upgrade the outpost, because we're rich. Scavenge it, because it feels weird not to. Ah, meds rucksack. I guess I'll just send him home with this rucksack on his back. Uh, so, who do we want? Who's going to be good with? She's a close combat person. So we could go with somebody who has something like heroism, uh, which can use everything well. Well, actually, yeah, let's just do that. Let's let's switch to uh, Yvera. Oh, Sinister Plank, we'll see you later. Uh, yeah, Sinister Plank has to leave work because it's 10 p.m. where they are, which is much later than it is here. You must be in, like, the U.K. or something, uh, or or somewhere else in Europe. I guess that's that's mainland Europe, that, that time difference, isn't it? Okay, so. Do we have a... That is not a heavy weapon. It just kind of looks like one. Let's grab her a heavy weapon. Way down at the bottom. Let's, should we do brick hammer or double bit axe or big daddy skillet? Let's go big daddy skillet. That's a fun one. Um, and then let's, she's a red talon person. I feel like she should be a little bit better armed than that. Uh, like a MP5 or something, just something straightforward. 
And this fires 9 mil. This fires 22. So it brings him back up 9 mil. Let's make sure she's got some health. And let's make sure she's got some cure because she's going to be fighting a Plague Heart. And I guess this is probably good. The main thing I... I want to make sure she can do is is clear out clear out regular zombies so that she can go one on one with a feral. That's that's the thing that we're going to need to be able to do is go one on one with a feral. Oh, so Sinister Plank is from Sweden. That makes sense. So wow, this is a uh, I've been to Sweden around this time of year. Congratulations on surviving. Okay. So it looks like we did find a Juggernaut and a Bloater. Which is perfect for those other... Oh, no. You know what I feel like I need to do now? Since I've got a Juggernaut and a Bloater here, I can use this character later to do those heavy weapon things. Since I've got those two zombies here, I should... grab those other bounties. So I'm just going to be wishy-washy and just change my mind a bunch. Oh? Oh? Is that it? Alright. Okay, so I'll need to grab myself a rifle. But what I wanted to grab was bloater wall crouch, juggernauts with rifles. Okay. Actually, let's just keep the zombies with heavy weapons. I can still do that. Armored with vehicles. That's not likely to happen in this neighborhood. And then we're going to go back here. We're going to grab ourselves a rifle from the supply locker. And we're going to murder ourselves a juggernaut. funny i have this like habit now from pacific drive of wanting to turn off my headlights every time you get out of the car so i don't waste battery that's not necessary here <laughs> but it's kind of fun how like um habits cross over between games so i want to get a nice 762 or now actually let's look at the 50 rifles wait are they did i miss them anti-material rifle i think that doesn't count as a regular old rifle cannon definitely doesn't I don't know if anti-material rifle does. Cannon definitely doesn't. So let's go with the gatekeeper. Capacity 10, 762. Capacity 8, capacity 5. Capacity, yeah, I think the gatekeeper might be what we want. Let's take off its... Actually, should we keep the suppressor? Maybe we should keep the suppressor and see if we can take out the Juggernaut without it knowing we're there. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. Because um, if we put a brake on it, it'll do more damage. But... But it might be possible to just sit there and mess with a Juggernaut. Oh, there he is. I see him. Okay. Okay, so there's that bounty. He's watching his fallen friends. Oh, wait, I just realized I don't, I've got the wrong gun out. Hold on. So that is a quieter gun than this. This is not going to be as quiet. Let's see. So I don't know how much damage I'm doing. 
how many shots of this is going to take. So he's like, I think that zombies don't feel pain. I think he's just like, a thing happened. It's not particularly distressing to him. Oh, missed. I mean, I would just aim for his body, which is easy, but I think you'd get a significant damage boost from hitting him in the head. Oh, that was a miss. Oh, that. I'm just shooting to either side of his freaking head. Oh, there's a feral. Okay, I should definitely try to take that feral out. I'm not ready to fight that with heavy weapons yet because I won't get any bounty credit for it. I could probably even get closer. But you'll notice he hasn't even staggered yet. I'm worried that... Oh, whoops. I am just not doing enough damage. Oh, there he goes. Okay, he did just stagger. This is going to take forever. I feel like maybe what I should be doing is trying to hit him with, like, landmines or something. Knock him down. Yeah, okay, yeah. Orithaus is suggesting the same thing. I should throw grenades at him. And then when he gets knocked down. That, oh, that's two staggers, though. I could also have just been missing a whole lot. Now that he's coming straight at me. He's a little easier to hit. Oh, now he's in a bush, though. Out of bush. Yeah, his head's a little harder to... Here, kill his friend. There we go. Zombies aren't that smart. Hey, quit walking sideways. Oh. Oh, I didn't mean quit walking. Be consistent. It Please make yourself an easier target. See, I would only do this with the Salt of the Earth because they have so much ammo built up over the years. Like, I'm going through so much 7.62 right now. It's insane. Oh, he just, his head moves a lot when he starts walking. Okay, get out of the... Get out of the bush. Hey, what happens if I shoot your friend? Is that close enough for you to notice? No. What about that friend? I said that. I can't even kill that one. Whatever. Oh, so Sinister Flake says, Side note, the new mission giving access to Echo Weapons is amazing. I love the Echo SMG so much. I'm glad that you're into those. I believe that, that it was Joe that made those. Was I not hitting his head or something? Oh, now I, now, now I need to reload. Okay, yeah, him being behind a wall is making this difficult. Zombies are not smart, but they are accidentally smart sometimes. Okay, fine. Get a little closer. Okay, come at me, bro. Seriously, why is this not working? His head is down. Is it just, there we go. I think I was just aiming wrong. Like I just was not really aiming at his head. All right. 
I mean, I guess I could kill some zombies with heavy weapons while I'm here. Oh, get off. Oh, I love hitting two with one glove. Oh, look, hey, armored zombies that I could have hit with my, I, I could have hit with my car. By the way, I love the audio on, on this pan. It's just such a satisfying clank, especially when you hit two zombies with it at once. Oh, come on. All right, that was 10 zombies. Not too bad. Let's get back over here. Prep for the next thing and then go deliver these bounties back to the other group. So we're gonna go back to our nice little SMG. Actually, let's go with the Echo SMG this time. What did that fire? Nine mil again, okay. Because people in the chat are talking about how much they love the Echo SMG, let's do the Echo SMG. But first, let's run back to the bounty broker. There's something about this intersection. I could just can never orient myself when I'm here. I always have just wrong intuitions about which corner the church is on, which corner the clinic's on, which direction the bounty broker's in. For some reason, I can learn it an infinite number of times and it doesn't stick in my brain. Not sure why that is. Also, the way up this... Are you serious? <laughs> the way up this hill to the bounty broker, also, I constantly drop out of my head. Am I... Am I just... Come on, 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 come on! There we go. Sinister Punk says, it's nice to know my favorite game franchise is in such good hands. I don't know if you were saying that while I was wrecking my car and having no idea what I was doing, it might be sarcastic. I'm going to take it as sarcastic. <gasps> Hello. Oh, do, do I have the option to not be firing that fast? I do. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. I need to switch to the other community to complete my bounties. That's right. All right, well, I'm gonna snap my fingers then and go do that. Okay, so uh, apparently the zombies are laying siege to my base. Uh, and so that has given me a new problem to solve. Um, but I only have, I only have 10 minutes left. So what I'm gonna do is prepare real quick. So. There's a few different ways we can handle this. We could go fight the siege, but what happens if I kill the plague cart while the siege is ongoing? Will the siege still happen? I'm not sure, but either way, I'm gonna grab my heavy weapons, my heavy weapon bounties and figure out what I'm gonna do. Okay, okay, yeah, no, it looks like we got a real siege situation going on here. So we're gonna go back there and try to deal with the siege. However, at any second, I might have to just cut out, snap my fingers, and come back later on uh, to finish whatever we've got going. So between sessions, by the way, wait, is this the direction I wanted to go? Sure, it's as good as any. Um, between sessions, I, uh, I noted that Sinister Plank uh, had basically credited Brian Menard with them having uh, increased their, their skill level in State of Decay 2. They were struggling on the Dread Zone, but by watching Brian Menard play on Lethal and give his sort of like instructional videos that he's made about le the Lethal Zone, that actually really helped Sinister Plank uh, up their game. Uh, and they were grateful to him. So yeah, so I mean, if, if there are some of you out there that are watching me play State of Decay 2 um, and you like watching people play this game, but you haven't discovered Brian Menard yet, definitely look up Brian Menard. Uh, he is not only a State of Decay 2 streamer, he, he started with State of Decay, but he's, he streams a lot of different games now, but he's very good at this game. And he's just a, he's just a really personable, entertaining guy. Like he's good at making it fun to watch him play and make it fun to listen to him talk. 
So uh, he's definitely a cool dude. If you're into this kind of thing and you haven't discovered him yet, definitely go see him. Though I think a significant amount of my audience is actually people that Brian Menard sent my way. So uh, I don't think that what I'm saying is a surprise to most of you. Hello there. Okay, so that was a siege horde. But there's another one coming in from... It's so funny, like, the new sieges are so weirdly similar to the sieges in State of Decay 1. Because in State of Decay 1, all sieges were was hordes converging... If I remember right, all sieges were was hordes converging on your home. And then there would be a bit, like... They, they weren't the same kind of event that we made them in State of the K2 originally. Um, and so a lot of fighting a siege was intercepting hordes. And you can prevent a siege from happening by just intercepting all the, all the hordes that were, along, that were along the way. And you didn't have to go home and wait inside your base for like a formal siege to start. Like, stopping the hordes was just as good. And so I really like the fact that, you know, um, the State of K 2 team, after I left, basically went in and found something that was really good about the previous game and made it work in the new game. And yeah, that counts as fighting the siege, and that only took me like three minutes. See, I was so accustomed to the way sieges work, like worked in the in, under the old regime, uh, that... I was kind of convinced that that was just going to be just automatically a really long time because you have to actually go home and like the siege was on a timer and you'd have all these waves that would come in on a clock. And so like there was a certain minimum amount of time it would take to do a siege. And it's like, I've only got 10 minutes. I got to get there. I've got to sit there and wait for the siege to start. I've got to go through the entire siege. It'll have all these waves. But man, if you're, if you're equipped and you're ready, you can just take a siege down. Like, it's actually, it's much... I mean, if I, yeah, I could decide to wait inside my base and have them converge and, and wait for each horde to arrive and have them all, you know, fight you know, fight them all alongside my people. But if I'm ready to fight a bunch of hordes on the road, I can just fight a horde, bunch of hordes on the road and take care of it. So uh, that was pretty cool. I like the way that this game works now. But... I do have to go get ready for another meeting. It's going to be a fairly quick meeting, and then I've got some writing work I need to do after that. But once I'm done with all of that, before I head home, I'm going to come back. I'm going to finish both of these episodes. So I'll snap my fingers right now. Wait a minute. I'm not going to snap my fingers while that guy's hanging out here. I'm going to snap my fingers, come back later, and I will see you all then. Okay, I'm back after a few hours of um, very annoying work, but <laughs> I got it done. Uh, it wasn't the work I intended to do when I left. I did different work, but that work is done. So what were we going to do? We were going to... Right, let's look at our bounties. Killing zombies with heavy weapons, killing a plague cart with a heavy weapon, killing a feral with a heavy weapon. So the feral is going to be the hard bit. And I'm not even sure if, like, there's going to be probably a feral involved in this next Plague Heart fight. But I don't think that feral is necessarily the feral I should try to kill. Because that feral is going to be surrounded by a bunch of other zombies. Um, and I don't know if I can deal with that. I do have some fire, however. So, you know what? What I'm going to do is head over to that Plague Heart. I'm going to start trouble with that Plague Heart first thing. And then we'll see what happens with the feral. We're just going to have to play the feral situation by ear. I'm going to keep this car out here. Oh, there's some kind of... Okay, no. Okay, screw you guys. Everybody go over there. Investigate that situation. And I'll... Wait, is this... This is not the room with the plague. Where's the plague heart? Oh, it's in here. Wait, where in here? Okay. Why? Why? 
Don't bite me. Oh, wow. Okay, hold on. That's not the direction I want to be going. I'm facing this way so that I can hit the zombie. I think. Oh, oh, was that? What was that? Oh. That seemed like a bad person. Yep. Oh, oh, I forgot. I'm not in the lethal zone anymore. So let's stay off the back of the car. I'm not in the lethal zone anymore. So that means... This feral is going to be way easier to fight than my usual feral thing. Maybe I can handle this. Also, maybe not. No guarantee. But... Oh, wait, I meant to dodge that. I meant to dodge that, too, you jerk. Okay, so I can smack him around a couple of times, but after a few smacks, I need to dodge. Oh, crap. There we go. Smack, smack, smack down. Okay, we do not... We do not want to hit him with the execution. The execution move. There we go. The execution move would not have counted as a heavy weapon. So, what we needed to do was keep smacking him, and then when we saw him raring up to attack us, dodge the attack, and then keep on smacking him. So we got that done. Now we've got, oh, we've got so many freaking zombies in here. Hold on. Hey, everybody. It is nice to have guns for you. Okay. Is that everybody? Not the correct room. Okay, how many times am I gonna... This is the entire wrong building again. Okay, hold on. This is where the plague heart is. All right, so I'm gonna keep hitting it. It's gonna keep calling more zombies. But... And I think I've only taken down one. This non-lethal zone is crazy. Zombies, I mean, plague hearts, take so little damage. Another one? Wait, was that a... I could have sworn I saw a feral. Maybe I just saw a regular-ass zombie. Oh, no, there he is. Okay, okay. Well, this time, I am not shy about using my gun on the feral. I just... Oh, I only have 15 shots left. In this gun, anyway. Take that, buddy. All right. You. Anybody else? You. 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 Are we good? There's a distant zombie. I've only got four shots left in the SMG, so maybe I should switch to my revolver that has eight shots. Anybody else here? Oh, look. You and you and you and you. Okay. Reload. All right. Here we go. Yes. 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 And because this is not the lethal zone, there's no zombies around because it just killed all the nearby zombies. So, awesome. Let's load this into the trunk. And I got a... Ooh, I got a Pepper 1022. That's a fun one. And this guy and that guy. Okay, let's go back and collect our plague samples. So now I just need to kill more zombies with heavy weapons. Because there were so many zombies around, I wasn't killing them with my heavy weapon. I was uh, using gunslinging because I'm not insane. So, by the way, hello, Malator. Thanks for joining the chat. Hello, Airy Twitch. Apparently Twitch didn't notify Airy Twitch that I'd gone live again. I don't know, maybe it's just because I had just recently gone live. We did kind of two sessions in a row. It might not send you multiple notifications from the same channel if I keep quitting and coming back. Oh, so Malator wants to know if I've seen Shogun, and he says that it's great. So, no, I haven't, though it, ha it did come highly recommended by, like, the podcasts and stuff that I listen to. So I have been 
very interested in seeing it. Lately, I just haven't felt like I've had a lot of time to watch TV. I used to watch tons and tons of TV all the time. But, by the way, I should probably... Oh, that's an ammo outpost. Let me go grab that ammo outpost. Um, I should probably grab some more outposts is what I was saying. Um, but yeah, lately I've, I've just been feeling so much um, of a deficit when it comes to how many video games I've been playing. You know, like, I, I keep feeling like I'm just... I've got all of these very long-term video games that I've been eager to play that I just haven't had time to play. And, oh, there's a freaking juggernaut around here. Can I even claim this? Let's see. Yes, I can. Confirm. And also, upgrade. Um, that, yeah, it's like any time I've got the free time that I would usually devote to, um, to watching a TV show, uh, I usually devote that time to trying to play a video game instead. Because uh, I just feel like I'm falling way behind in all the games that I want to play. I think I had this parked... Yeah, I had this parked in the front, didn't I? All right, I'll go ahead and switch. So, and the other problem is I've been trying to catch up with the Stormlight Archive. So, like, usually, like, watching TV was a thing I would do on my commute. Uh, but now I actually listen to the audiobook for Stormlight Archive books um, while I'm there. And I'll basically, my routine on my commute these days is to set up my phone. So, like, I'll be, pl I'll be playing a Stormlight Archive book on my on audible on my phone oops and then i'll be playing into the breach on my phone so it's just brandon sanderson and into the breach constantly anytime i uh, i'm sort of sitting you know sitting on a bus or something like that so i've gotten up to the dawn shard novella so that is book number 3.5 so i i had originally read the first three stormlight archive books i didn't pick up the fourth one because I felt like I needed to reread the first three to remember what the crap was going on. And I never had time to read them. And then later on, I was like, hey, audiobooks are a thing. So I start, so I re-listened to the three of them on audiobooks. And so I've just finished the third one. I've started the 3.5th one. And uh, then I'm going to do the fourth one. By the way, I do kind of like this whole, like, novellas between novels thing that's become kind of popular. Brandon Sanderson does it. Uh, James S.A. Corey did it with the uh, with my other favorite novel series, um, The Expanse. And uh, it's just kind of a fun way to, like, you know, writers who just can't help but just put a bunch of extra subplots and extra characters in their books can use those novellas to just, like... Because there's this character, the Dawn Shard uh, novella, um, there's this character, Risen, that it's about. Risen, I think, has, like one or two scenes in each of the books and she seems like she has nothing to do with anything else that's going on she's just another character exploring just a weird weird corners of the world of the stormlight, Ar stormlight archive and then finally in book 3.5 the novella dawn shard she's the main character she's actually doing something central to the plot but it took, it was three books. And knowing Brandon Sanderson, he always intended this. Like, he knew exactly who this character was, what he was doing with her, what, how, like, what he was preparing her for. Because this guy, like, there's some writers out there who just fly by the seat of their pants with no plan. And, uh, you know, George R. R. Martin is kind of this way. Um, I, I'm very familiar with other uh, authors who are that way. But, um, but yeah, no, he like Sanderson seems to like like when I was read the thing I was most impressed about with this with the Steelheart books was that like he had a major earth shaking reveal at the end of all three of those books. And like the earth shaking reveal at the end of the third book was something he had to know at the beginning of the first book for the first book to make any sense. So he wasn't just flying by the seat of his pants. He had that entire trilogy, at least the major ideas of what he was going to accomplish with those books. He had them all worked out. Uh, like They were fun, foundational to the world, and that is not the usual thing that authors do. So I was very impressed. Anyway, what the heck am I doing? I need to kill a bunch of zombies with a heavy weapon. So let's, let's go do that, why don't we? Um... Let's grab this random car, and we will get on the road. Oh, hey, Sinister Plank showed up, and Dr. Lockenstein, good to see you, and Cogs, good to see all of you. Yeah, so um, 
Sinister Plank says, I love the Mistborn series so much. Yeah, I, I love it too. I've uh, I read the, I think they might have actually been the first Sanderson novels I read. I read the first three Mistborns, and then much more recently I read the additional four. And I was actually really thrilled to hear, like, so, so apparently his plan right now is to get through book five, which is the next book of the Stormlight Archive, and then he's going to take a break. Like, he's basically going to do sort of like, do like a little halftime thing with Stormlight Archive. And, oh, there's a bunch of zombies. That's who I want up there. He's going to do a little halftime thing, and then he's going to go back to Mistborn, and we're going to get another different era of Mistborn. Because... If you don't, if you don't read the Mistborn books, basically the first trilogy takes place in one era that's sort of, it's got kind of, uh, it's like ancient medieval fantasy sort of vibe. I mean, like any Sanderson story, magic is like a science, and so almost nothing comes off as sort of like the very like mystical, magical medieval fantasy that you see from some other art like authors. Everything feels like enlightenment here to some degree or another because people are just constantly thinking kind of scientifically about how their magic works. And that's just how Sanderson thinks about magic. Um, okay, so I mean, did I... Of course, of course I got rid of my... Stay away from me. Alright, you know what? Would you... Am I gonna get... Am I gonna get you Vera killed? Am I gonna get you Vera killed? I'm probably gonna get her killed. No, 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 no. Stop it! I didn't even kill ten zombies. Okay, let's let's. She was already sick. It makes sense. But yeah, I I just was emptying her her inventory and I emptied the cure out there too. So let's let's undo that. Go get her properly cured, and then we'll come out again. Try to accomplish a little more. But anyway, yeah, so so he had sort of a medieval fantasy series. And then he jumped ahead to sort of a kind of 1800s westerny style series in the same world. But after, you know, a long time had passed and, you know, technology and culture had changed quite a bit. Uh, so let's... Where did I put my... Is this the infirmary? Yes. So can I just... There we go. And then let's also... Where was primary care? There we go. Okay. We're in better shape now. I feel confident. So Sinister Plank just referred to the second Mistborn series as the Vax and Vane series, which I find very, very amusing uh, because, of course, to an English speaker, it's Wax and Wayne. And uh, the characters, the two main characters, one is named Wax, short for Waxillium, and the other one is named Wayne. And, of course, waxing and waning is what the moon does. And so it's a, uh, it's a play on words. But Sinister Plank is Swedish. And I'm betting... I don't know, but I'm betting... Do you pronounce W's and V's differently from English speakers? And so is it Vax and Vane for you? Either pronounced that way or spelled that way? Or are you just... Um, are you just being weird yourself? Because like, if, if, if that revealed like an interesting linguistic difference, I was going to be fascinated by it. Um, but uh, if it's actually just whatever, you were just spelling the names differently to be funny, then that's whatever. I won't make a big deal out of it. I've already made a big deal out of it. It's too late. I've already ruined everything if that was not meant to be a big deal. Or if that did not deserve to be made a big deal of. Okay, so at first I thought that I had forgotten what the bounty actually said. I just glanced back. And the bounty says I can kill any zombies with this. It doesn't have to just be plague zombies. There are a lot of bounties where the rule is... Oh, I think I didn't get credit for that. Where the rule is plague zombies. But I think I can just kill any zombies for this bounty. So let's go find some more. Oh, 
Okay, yeah, so Sinister Plague confirms that, yes, V and W are the same sound, uh, or they make the same sound in Swedish. I'm curious, is it is the sound that they make, is it more like the English V sound, or is it more like the English W sound? Like, are you, like, if you run into an English word spelled with a V, do you pronounce it with something that sounds to an English speaker like a W, or is it the other way around? If you encounter an English... I forgot which one I said first. Whatever, you know. If you encounter an English W, do you pronounce it with what sounds to an English-speaking person like a V? Okay, yeah, Sin Sinister Plague says it's a V sound. That that sounds familiar to me. I mean, I don't really know anything about the Swedish language. It's, uh, only a very small number of things. But... Uh, that's really fascinating that, 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 that those characters, that you would think of them as, as, as having V at the beginning of their names. Okay, so it sounds like we got a friend. Ha ha. I gotta admit, I kind of miss, I kind of miss the Nightmare Zone. After playing so much on lethal. Because how easy it is to kill ferals is just like, oh, I just feel like I'm on vacation right now. Yeah, so DXR says uh, lethal is nearly impossible with the feral spawn rates. We, we'll just, yeah, the fact that there are blood feral hordes, basically, in the lethal zone is insane. <laughs> That's not a thing we should ask, ask people to deal with, but we totally do. Because honestly, like, people, people already complain that the lethal zone is too hard, you know? I guess already isn't really a thing because it's been years now, but, like... It's weird, like, this is supposed to be... I mean, aren't I playing in the Nightmare Zone? Oh, no, I'm only in Dread. Okay, there was a period... Oh, that's right. I've been seeing r regular old Screamers. That's right. There was a period where I switched this team. Oh, gosh! Where I switched this group... Ah, uh, into the Nightmare Zone, briefly. But I think I forgot that I had switched them back. So I thought I was sitting in the Nightmare Zone. But no, this is... This is the lethal zone. Uh, sorry, this is the dread zone. So, yeah. Which is fun. That's right, I've been, of course, because I've been seeing regular bloaters, too. So, of course, it's been there. I just wasn't, uh, I just wasn't picking it all the way through. Okay, hold on. I did, of course, I didn't bring any, any stuff to recharge my stamina. I just start, gotta start moving away. Get a little bit of it back. Oh, that didn't hit him? Okay, once you get them all on the ground, you, know, you can start hitting the Y button a lot on their heads. And your character will do the execution that swings it around their heads. Oh, wow. Okay, I thought I was going to need to have at least, at least one more session, but yeah, I guess that was enough. So, back to the Bounty Broker we go. And I'm starting to run a little low on time. So even though this is not going to be the final bounties from the pack, I think I might still need to make this my ending. Partly just because I think I need... I, I still have a little bit of time left, but I kind of want to spend that time on doing a, a complete episode in the lethal zone with my lethal builder run. So... I guess we'll... Leave Yavera here. Did I pick anything up? I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, we just got a little bit of parts. That's it. All right. So, yeah. Yavera is going to be right here waiting for us the next time we play with the Salt of the Earth. But I think we're going to make this the end of this Salt of the Earth episode. So let me check up with the chat. Make sure I didn't forget anything here. Oh, Lock and Seed says, yeah, because of the Blood Ferals, he only drives spiky vehicles uh, in um, in the Lethal Zone, which is tough because, you know, some of us have access to spiky vehicles not everyone has access to, I think. Maybe we gave those to everybody now. Oh, now I don't even remember. Anyway. 
Sinister Plank said, I started a fresh lethal on Drucker this morning, and I really enjoy the scarcity of resources. It's been a while since I started completely fresh. Yeah, I have not yet done a lethal run that was completely fresh. And uh, and I don't know if I can handle it yet. That sounds much harder than, well, I've only been bringing legacy communities into lethal. And actually, I've only been bringing the same legacy community <laughs> into lethal again and again. I have no idea if I can handle it with another group. So we'll have to see at some point. So Cog says that he asked a question a little further back. Let me see what I missed here. Um, Cogs. Oh, so Cogs asked, why is there no author trait? Um, just didn't think of it. You know, I mean, uh, basically, the way that I came up with a lot of the career-based traits was I started with the skills and then came up with, with careers that would justify those skills. Um, and we didn't we didn't have a writing skill. Uh, we had an art skill, which is close, uh, but we didn't really have a writing skill. And so there, there was never a motivation for me to come up with an author career to uh, to justify it. So I came up with a bunch of other careers because, but pretty much all of them were justified by either a either a skill that we had that was actually intended to be useful or funny in the game, or they were justified by some other stat boost. But there isn't really anything that an author does that, that feels like it would give like it would be the obvious first choice for some skill or stat boost uh, that we have in the game. So yeah, so it just didn't occur to me. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, so Dr. Lackenstein says you could asso associate alcoholism with uh, with being an author. We also don't have alcoholism uh, as, a, as a mechanic in the game. So uh, I don't think that would help me very much. And also, um, uh, the authors that I know the best are not alcoholics. So uh, I, I don't think I would have made that association. So some, some of them are very into alcohol. Some of them are very not into alcohol. But I don't know any of them that I would ascribe alcoholism to. There are a few famous authors that are famous for being alcoholics. But I think that actually, I mean, almost anyone who, you know, alcoholism would make it harder to do almost any career. And a career like author where it's so dependent on you being very self-motivated and, and getting out there and making things happen because it's not like you got a boss that's making you come to work every day. Um, it's, it would be a lot harder to be an author. I think that honestly, like alcoholism probably selects against being an author, even if there's some prominent examples for whom that's not true. Uh, yeah, so D DXR says that there, there is that, uh, that enclave that's alcoholic. Yeah, that, that is true. They are depicted as alcoholics and none of that carries over in any way when you recruit them into your community if you even can recruit i don't remember if you can recruit that group into your community or not but none of that stuff would carry over like that's actually one of the weaknesses in the game is the fact that you know we do a lot of story stuff in missions and stuff that like implies things about the characters that just disappears as soon as the characters become yours anyway i really should get out of here to uh fire off the ending of the other episode so there is a subscribe button and links to other videos. And the next time I play with the salt of the earth, that will go there. So click there and uh, I will see you later. Unless you're live, we'll keep playing.